Hello students, my name is Neha Nadukmar Bendre, Assistant Professor in Zoology at Rai Shikshan Samstha's R.B. Narayanrao Boroke College, Sri Rampur. Today we are going to learn about the topic which belongs to ZY336, paper number 6, Cell Biology. In this we are going to learn about the cell organelle that is called as mitochondria which forms the very important part of the cell. So let's have a look on what is mitochondria. To start with, I'm going to tell you about the definition of mitochondria. So it is the thread-like or granular substances which are present in the cell, which are nothing but the mitochondria. So these are said as the powerhouse of the cell. This is a very important and major thing about mitochondria that it is a powerhouse of cell as it gives energy to all the metabolic activities or the function that are carried out in the cell. So it is called as powerhouse of the cell. Next it contains coenzymes and different kind of enzyme to carry out some kind of reaction which generates or produces ATP in the cell and that uh, energy is utilized by the mitochondria to generate the ATPs and make give energy to all kind of cell organelles. Next is the first mitochondria in any cell was first observed by Fleming and Kolliker in 1882. So Fleming and Kolliker observed in some kind of cells the typical structure of mitochondria. Okay, so that time in 1882 he started naming that organisms or different kind of scientists named this structure or this organelle as uh, bioblast or Altman granules. Why it is called as Altman granules? Because it was discovered by the scientist Altman. Okay, and so after this discovery, he said that the granules should be named as Altman granules. Okay, also it is called as bioblast. But later on, some scientist or one of the scientists denied the term and he, disco he discovered the term as mitochondria. So since then the these granules were called as mitochondria which was the, the name was given by the scientist Benda in 1898. So he uh, the Benda scientist in 1898 termed the uh, granules called as mitochondria. Okay so here now we will move on to the origin of this granular structure that is called as mitochondria from where they evolved so there are some there were some theories postulated by different kind of scientists okay they were uh, having some hypothesis regarding the structure of mitochondria okay that how it evolved in different kind of cells okay in this thing i would like to tell that the most important thing that which other organelles don't have that is that this specific this special organelle has its own dna which rather neither of the organelles have their own okay so in nucleus in each kind of nucleus there are two dna one is of actual the cell and other one is of its mitochondria so according to that there were theories put on by different kind of scientists that how this typical structure is having its own DNA or how it may be have entered into the cell. So accordingly we will see that what are different origins of mitochondria. Okay, since some of uh, one theory was postulated that the division of pre-existing mitochondria. In this theory they thought that there was a pre-existing mitochondria present in the cell okay which was already present in the cell and later on there was splitting of that mitochondria into small pieces after that splitting into small pieces the smaller pieces then de uh, developed into the uh, mature mitochondrial structure so that time they thought that uh, afterwards later on when the cell divides this splitted structure also evolved as mitochondria in different kind of cells okay so this was the theory that division from pre-existing mitochondria but rather on there was no such uh, theory accepted so the next theory was put on that they originated from 
the organ is called as er or the plasma membrane the scientists thought that it may have evolved from the organelles called as endoplasmic reticulum or the plasma membrane so here you can see in this picture this is the plasma membrane of any cell okay from this uh, membrane there was an invagination of a structure okay so like this there was invagination of this structure which entered into the cytoplasm okay and there it gave birth to the some uh, structure called as mitochondria so this invagination may be from plasma membrane or may be from the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum but later on there was no proof regarding this so this theory was also not accepted okay the next theory came in this theory uh, what was postulated that this theory was called as endosymbiont theory endosymbiont theory suggest that in the previous or in some years ago in some billion billion years ago when there was nothing on the life so there was some uh, first cell called as the prokaryotic cell it was said that the evolution started from the prokaryotic cell so whichever cell was present which was the first there was this prokaryotic cells so later on when the eukaryotic uh, cell uh, evolved that time they thought that the eukaryotic cell may have engulfed here i have re represented in the diagram that this eukaryotic cell may have engulfed a prokaryote which was having uh, this, uh, their own enzymes their own dna okay but what happened after engulfing here you can see that the prokaryote was engulfed by the eukaryote okay so later on it was observed that this was not degraded the eukaryotic enzymes did not degrade this prokaryotic molecule so it was saved from the degradation okay but later on along with that cell division the prokaryote or that aerobic bacteria was also divided in that particular cell and like this so and so forth the same structure evolved with the that with that structure and now it has been turned or it has been called as mitochondria and so it is having its own dna okay so this was called as endosymbiont theory okay but still there are postulations are going on and there are many or uh, many more hypotheses going on on the origin of mitochondria okay so now let's see the occurrence and the structure the ultra structure of mitochondria okay. now after uh, looking about the uh, definition the uh, presence of uh, mitochondria how are different kind of mitochondria we will see that occurrence of mitochondria okay so where the mitochondria occurs and especially in which regions okay so in this the mitochondria occurs in plants and animals in most of the eukaryotic cells it is not present in prokaryotes okay so it occurs in all the plants and animals okay to give out the energy to that uh, cells okay it is absent in prokaryotes it is care should be taken whenever you are asked about uh, in a different kind of competitive exams there there are many confusion statements in that you should be sure that that mitochondria is always absent in prokaryotes okay so now let's we will move on to that number of mitochondria varies according to the cell type okay in our body there are n number of different kind of cells but not each type of cell is possessing or consisting the same amount of mitochondria it's never because according to the function of that cell type the number varies okay for example i have given there is high rate of mitochondria or high number of mitochondria when when there is high metabolic activity in that cell whenever any kind of cell requires high amount of uh, energy or when there is uh, lots of function metabolic activities taking place in the cell that time is 100% sure that time the mitochondria level will be high the number of mitochondria will be high okay also inversely 
or we can say that wherever the cell which has low metabolic activity at that time there are the mitochondria are present in very low lump number okay so next we will see that then where is that high metabolic activity in which kind of cell so the cells are present or the mitochondria are abundant in liver cells okay muscle cells and kidney cells here i would like to tell that most importantly the highest metabolic activity always takes place in the muscles okay there is a continuous contraction relaxation and different kind of cellular activities taking place in the muscle and so therefore as this is area of high metabolic activity the percentage of mitochondria is always high in muscle cells also in the liver cells also along with the uh, liver cell different kind of activities or metabolic activities or different kind of cycles okay occur in the liver at that time one more is there that is helping in the detoxification the liver also contains the enzymes uh, for the detoxification okay and that time also the mitochondria helps a lot to detoxify the different kind of agents and it removes the ammonia okay and also in the kidney cells so these are all the cells which are uh, always at the high point for different carrying out different functions in the cells the major function in the cell and so the requirement of mitochondria is always highest also one more thing is that it is highest in the cardiac cells or the heart cells heart cell because we know that it is a involuntary muscle okay and that time the requirement of that pumping action continuously regularly 24/7 365 day and so the requirement of mitochondria is also highest or present in highest number in the heart cells okay so this is clear that high mitochondria is equal to the high metabolic activity and low mitochondria that is low metabolic activity okay next that as i have said that all the cell type contains mitochondria but not at the same level also there are some cells which lack mitochondria completely and which is that cell that is that are the red blood cells okay this lack mitochondria completely okay next is apart from this they are present in different cell type but when they are present in the cell they are uniformly distributed in the cytoplasm of the cell there is no specific distinction that they are present in this corner or that corner but they are present uh, in the uni they are present uniformly all over the cell also but there, there have been means we have observed that different kind of uh, organism possesses some position okay uh, of mitochondria in certain kind of cells okay so in paramecium it was observed that mitochondria are present beneath the cell surface so if this is a cell this is the membrane so mitochondria are lying beneath the cell surface okay that is taking place in paramecium next in kidney cell when the kidney cell was observed so the mitochondria was occurring in the folds of the basal regions of the kidney cells okay and in neurons when neurons were observed they were found so in neurons we know the function that it transmit the impulses it transmit the uh, signals from one place to another with the help of a impulse with the help of a axon so it's sure that the metabolic activities is high so in neuron where it is present so it is present in that transmitting sing, uh, impulse okay mitochondria is present also during cell division okay during cell division there is a very important uh, apparatus called as spindle apparatus to pull the chro uh, chromosome apart okay and that time energy is required that time this mitochondria uh, sir, uh, goes around the spindle apparatus to provide that energy to the spindle apparatus for pulling apart the chromosome so during cell division the mitochondria are present around the spindle apparatus okay next is they are concentrated at last we can say that they are concentrated in the region of high activity so wherever there is high activity or high metabolic activity they are concentrated in that region 
okay now after this uh, looking at the occurrence of mitochondria in the cell we are going to study about the ultra structure and functions of mitochondria so let's have a look now after looking at the uh, occurrence of the uh, mitochondria now let's study or look out for the ultra structure of the mitochondria in in this we are going to look out that what are structures are present actually in the mitochondria which is carrying out different kind of activities in the cell so here we first we will look out for the morphology how is the morphological structure when we are seen under the microscope or the electron microscope the this structure or this organelle has been occurred in filamentous or granular in shape or ribbon shape there are various kind of uh, different shapes have been seen according to the uh, cell function or different cell types so the shape of the mitochondria varies from cell to cell it's not particular that only a circular or rod shaped bacteria are present in uh, rod shaped uh, mitochondria are present in different kind of cells so the shape may varies from cell to cell so it may be rod shaped it may be club shaped it may be ring shaped or any shape a filament okay so it may vary so let after looking for the shape let's study about the size the size along with the shape the size also varies along uh, with the different kind of uh, shapes given to the requirement of the cell so size may vary from 3 to 10 microns in length okay and in width it varies from 0.2 to 1.0 microns in width okay so it is observed smallest the smallest mitochondrion size was observed in yeast cells okay and the largest mitochondrion size was uh, occurred in the oocytes of amphibia the eggs of amphibia okay so this was about the morphological uh, uh, points about regarding the shape and size of the mitochondria now in this structure of mitochondria let us see that what are different distinct types are present in this mitochondria structure so this is the diagrammatic view of mitochondria okay so when you are asked in the exam about uh, the describe the mitochondria so this all this characters okay all the discussed points along with a proper diagram is very necessary to take full points okay so here is the structure of mitochondria here you can see some five distinct types present in this structure so which are those first is the outer membrane here here you can see the outer membrane okay always the mitochondria is double membrane membrane structure so it possesses outer membrane and inner membrane so in this fifth uh, five types there is outer membrane and inner membrane so the outer one is called outer membrane and here the inner layer is called as inner membrane so in between that membrane that space is present that is called as intermembrane space or it is also called as perimitochondrial space okay so here is the intermembrane space present between the outer membrane and inner membrane so it is necessary to label it okay here the next type is the after the outer intermembrane space and inner membrane space there is presence of cristae and matrix so where are the cristae the inner uh, membrane okay how it is present the inner membrane is having a folding projections the inner membrane is folded in such kind of structure that is called as finger like projection same as that finger okay so this kind of projections are present in the inner membrane so this projections are called as cristae okay this finger like projections are called as cristae and whatever the space is present in between this uh, uh, space or in the cytoplasm is called as matrix okay the space in the uh, between the uh, cristae okay that is called as the matrix okay 
which uh, contains different kind of enzymes coenzymes okay along with this the intermembrane space carries most of the different kind of enzymes and coenzymes required for the electron transport chain here intra electron transport chain functions for producing more and more electrons whereas it forms more and more atps okay with the help of etc chain there is synthesis of atp okay so to synthesize this atp okay all the enzymes are present in, uh, in the intermembrane space because this space carries the etc chain molecules in that okay along with this there is a most important component that i have told uh, first in the lecture that it contains a distinct dna only this organelle possesses a dna okay which is circular in shape in our regular eukaryotic cell the dna that is present that is present in the linear form why the dna present in the uh, mitochondria is circular uh, in shape because as uh, the shape circular shape which is present also in the prokaryotes uh, in the bacteria the so same structure is present in the uh, dna of mitochondria okay now along with this there is a structure present on the cristae okay here can you see here a uh, structure is present on uh, cristae that is called as f1 particles okay so this structure is looking like this so these are the f1 particles uh, arranged along with this uh, membrane of cristae so this project uh, this f1 particles are very important in the synthesis of atp okay so this f1 particle has if you see deeply the structure if focus deeply on the single f1 particle it is having such kind of structure that is called as this f1 particle structure uh, consists of three structure that is called as head the globular head the stalk and the base with the help of this base it attaches to the cristae okay so this cristae are if you, somebody asked that how many cristae are present in each mitochondria so it also varies the number of cristae varies according to the metabolic activity if any particular with high metabolic activity possesses the mitochondria so the, they also possesses n number of projections of cristae to carry out more and more production of at or uh, atp okay so along with hope you understood this structure the different five distinct types so it is very important to label all this type and the importance of that uh, structure okay after looking out the ultra structure of the mitochondria let's look to the functions carried out by mitochondria in the cell so first and foremost uh, function that we have uh, discussed earlier in the lecture was it is called as the power house of the cell it means it helps in the power generation in the cell whatever atps are required or whatever energy is required by different kind of cell is given or generated by mitochondria okay with the help of this structure so it is called as first function is the power generation next is the thermogenesis thermogenesis means thermo means the heat genesis means the production so production of heat is done with the help of mitochondria so in uh, for example in some young mammals or um, hibernating mammals hibernating means the inactive state where uh, during some mammals undergo the inactive state uh, during the cold weather or some any uh, food unavailability so that time the this mammals young mammals or uh, hibernating mammals acquire this thermogenesis and at that time there is more and more generation of this mitochondria in the chest region in the chest region of that animals and for example in the bat okay in the bat at the chest region there is a uh, tissue called as brown fat okay so th at that in that brown fat there is more and more percentage of mitochondria to carry out this thermogenesis okay where uh, mitochondria are present in large number to produce the or heat okay here the energy is not released but the heat is generated so next function after thermogenesis is the calcium accumulation 
so here each and every cell is supplied with more and more number of calcium the appropriate number of calcium are maintained with the help of mitochondria so uh, so mitochondria help to accumulate different kind uh, accumulate the calcium ions to provide in different cell for proper maintenance of the calcium ions okay after calcium accumulation function it helps in the synthesis of steroid hormones the mitochondria helps to convert the cholesterol to uh, some steroid uh, steroidal elements to produce in the uh, produced by the adrenal cortex all this uh, conversion from cholesterol to steroid hormones are taking place in the adrenal cortex and that time mitochondria helps to uh, helps a lot to convert this cholesterol into steroidal hormones for also it helps in uh, testes to produce the testo hormones and in other estrogen so it is helpful in uh, synthesis of steroid hormones next function is the cellular respiration this is also an important uh, cellular uh, function of cellular respiration where the food stuff that we are taking inside that is in the form of fats carbohydrates and proteins are uh, degraded means they are converted into uh, co2 and water okay so after conversion of this food stuff into co2 and water the energy generation begins okay in the mitochondria okay so whatever conversion of this food stuff in the smaller particles is done with the and from that energy generation is done with the help of cellular respiration so this conversion of the food stuff into CO, CO2 and water is done with the help of different kind of cycles occurring in the mitochondria or in the different kind of cells. So they are for example glycolysis, oxi oxidative phosphorylation, okay, then um, like glu gluconeogenesis, then uh, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. So there are different kind of cycles are taking place in different uh, places in the cell and most important cycle that is taking place in the uh, mitochondria is Krebs cycle. Okay, also along apart from this uh, function there is also a uh, uh, mitochondrial function is there in the urea cycle. Okay, and most importantly in the cell death. So mitochondria helps a lot okay during the uh, process called as apoptosis or the program cell death okay so there is some energy required for uh, causing this uh, process of uh, program cell death okay if this cell death or uh, if there is less number of mitochondria during this process the cell death may not occur okay which then gives rise to the development of abnormal cell okay if cell death won't occur there will be given rise to ab abnormal cells which then leads to the cancerous cell so it is very necessary that each and every function should be carried out well by the mitochondria and if it doesn't occur then there will be some kind of impairment in the body okay so hope you have understood all the points regarding the mitochondria so thank you for watching